Good afternoon, morning, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. What is important here is we are here with an epic showdown that you are not going to want to miss. We have Johnny Link taking on Mitch Flower Power, two powerhouses in the group standings, both just incredibly strong players here. We are looking forward to an outstanding race. And if you're here, you're in the right place. If not, not. If you got friends, family that aren't here, you're going to want to bring them in here because this is going to be a best of three knockout drag out fight. And you are not going to want to miss it. We're getting started here with Johnny Leak and Mitch Flower Power in a bracket stage. And just what an incredible race that we're going to have in just one moment. Johnny Leak does come out of the group round robin stage with a 34-26 average. And Mitch Flower Power only 18 seconds behind him at a 34.44. So what can we expect here? Well, I'm expecting three. I am going to take the hot take right off the bat, and I'm going to expect three races here. It's a best of three. I'm going to expect them to go three uh, because these players are just so very good, and I'm expecting a lot of really, really good things from them. Uh, Johnny Leaf with an early death here on 3-1. Hopefully that won't be a factor as we do have a three Fortress World 1. And it could require all three fortresses. We are so going to have to wait and see what happens here because a three fortress world one could be one of the longest ways to get through world one. And if a seven F two is required, eight F one required, you know, some of our longer fortresses, this is going to take a bit of a long time for our runners to get through, but a lot of run left to go. Johnny link down one life, but definitely not out from this race yet. A lot of action still to come. And of course, only one of these fortresses will break the one that is route required. However, for Johnny Link and Mitch Firepower, that does mean they are going to have to play at least one fortress, which happens to be the one. 6F2 is going to be the one that takes them from 1.5 to 1.6, respectively of where they usually would be in the vanilla game. And now Mitch Firepower finds himself on 7-2, takes three blocks, not the three closest to the pipe, which I normally would take. But uh, he's very sure of this. He knows exactly where he wants to jump. He's going to jump there and move on to the rest of the 7-2. Meanwhile, about a half a level behind is Johnny Link and will be joining the 1-5 tile, which is, of course, 7-2, as we see on Mitch Firepower's screen. And he will be coming in with a Fire Flower. Uh, looks like a star on the side of Johnny Link may mean he tries to go for a Peace Speed strat. No can do. He's going to have to go the same route that Mitch Flower Power did. Takes three of the no blocks and will be proceeding on here in just one moment. Now, Mitch Flower Power having to go through 1-6. Uh, he does find 6-5. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, 6-5. I get that one in 6-6 six, six mixed up. I don't know why. Okay, 6-6 six, six on the side of Mitch Flower Power. Does mean that our runners are going to have to play a little bit cautiously here as the sea creatures are randomized. So these don't look too bad yet. We got a cheap cheap that likes to dive bomb. A couple of them actually, a couple of bloobers so far. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power just so good. Showing these bloobers who's boss. He's got the fire flower. He's got the skills. He's got the power to pay the bills. And he is now going to be breezing through 6-5 as Johnny Link, desperate to catch up, is going through 6-5 as well. Also with a Fire Flower, that is going to be the easiest way to get through 6-6, as he is uh, doing just the same that we saw Mitch Flower Power do. Unfortunately, does get hit by a dive bombing chip, cheap cheap. But we'll see if he goes for the power up here. I think that's a very good call. Uh, looks like he will despawn it, though. Just too hard to get to without taking damage. So hopefully he is able to get through here without any further issues. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power onto a coin airship. That is going to be two Boomerang Brothers that always stay the same in that arena for the coin ship. And a hammer comes out. Very interesting. This is a brackets run, though. So while we have done a lot of randomization, there's a lot that is randomized. We have the regular stages shuffled. We have the lost levels added in and shuffled. We have the fortresses shuffled. The world eight ships, blah, blah, blah. They've all been shuffled. Uh, but what we have not shuffled is the ability for hammers to break blocks that is not allowed here. This is brackets. These guys have to do it honestly, and there's no shortcuts by hammers breaking locks. Also, the in card game, the one that we know and love from 80,000 points as soon as you score that and get into the next 
or I'm sorry, when you score 80,000 points, there's an in-card game that pops up. You can match a couple uh, pairs, and if you do, you get that item or those coins or that one-up. We're not allowing that. These runners have to find other ways to get their items. You could use one three. There's a hidden item behind the end credit scene. You could use one fortress that also has a hidden item by flying up instead of going where Boom Boom normally would be. You just fly up and finish it off. And of course, you might be asking, but those are usually warp whistles. Well, that's not allowed either. Our runners are going to have to play an any percent warp whistle randomizer. So we have take, taken the scene, sh shaken it all up, threw it out across all seven worlds, and said, here, have fun, go take down Bowser. So the seven worlds are going to come up first, then eight, of course, will always be at the end. Bowser's Castle will be the very last level that these runners will, in fact, endure. And Miss Firepower with just a little bit of a problem on 5-3, which is the first level he came to in World 2. If you are looking for a world order so far, you're just about to get it. Because we have 1 and 2 already completed, which is uh, interesting. I was not expecting that. But who expects vanilla order in a brackets run? That's ridiculous. Anyway, so what's, on, what's at stake here for these two runners is Johnny Link came in with a 5-1 and Mitch Flower Power came in with a 6-0. So not only is this the really just a piece of resistance for all of these, uh, for these runners specifically, it's the ability to move on. I think there's like a four or $500 jackpot uh, that's going to be split between the top four runners, I believe. So obviously they're looking for a spot in the semifinals. They're looking for the whole kit caboodle. They're looking for everything here. And these guys are the guys that can do it. There is a lot of raw talent in this Okay, interesting choice for Mitch Firepower. Decides not to take the item. He is going to find a Fire Nipper. That's just not going to matter, though, as he finishes off with a small Mario. Johnny Link now on the second half of 5-3. He is going to be using a tail to glide his way into the next level, which will be 3-7 that we just saw Mitch Firepower on. So just about a half level again. Now, about a level now difference between these two runners. But Johnny Link, definitely not out of it. We still have World 6, World 7, World 8 coming up. And those are terribly difficult levels, especially without the ability to break blocks with hammers. Especially with a lot of things going on. So, we're not done yet. Don't go anywhere. But going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you do have a... Well, if you do move on from here, you're going to be looking at a spot in the 1 of 8. So, there's going to be 8 players there's going to be four matchups and you will be taking on the winner of glutamic acid versus macobra 52 and that of course will be going on i believe tomorrow is when that race will happen uh, no i apologize that's actually tonight so we have a lot of races today this is why it's a little hard to keep track of all of these so today we have of course here now we have johnny link versus mitch Farber at 4 p.m right after this don't go anywhere Paradox 64 is taking on the Hacksaw, and that is expected to be a mind-blowing outcome. It's going to be a great race. You don't want to miss that one either. Macobra 52 at 5 p.m. will be taking on Glutamic Acid, who has been just phenomenal up to this point. And then on the Challenge Cup side tonight at 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, there it is. 8 p.m. we have Demon Babbler taking on Sharky 2107 on the Challenge Cup side. So just a lot of great action coming up. We have a lot of very good, very raw talent in this in this community, uh, which is very evident by the, the community Challenge Cup that's been put on. Those were the guys that didn't quite make it out of the round robin stages with a good enough record. Uh, but these guys are fantastic. I had the opportunity to be on a race last night. That was a four person race. And I gotta tell you, it was amazing. They were very crisp, very sharp, had just a really great run. And we're so proud of the things that they've done. And we cannot wait to see them in the future for other tournaments, for other coming to our community races. Uh, we're looking forward to that for sure. So a lot of really good talent in this community. If you can be at a race, you want to be at a race because it's going to be a lot of fun to be to be at. And you're just not going to want to miss anything. So Johnny Link working on the World 1 airship and Mish Firepower heading into World 3. All right, well, I was trying to put in an answer to chat, but Nardar421 beat me. If you have any questions about the SMB3 randomizer, 
uh, the bracket schedule, the Discord, you want to play the game, highly, 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 highly recommend that you get to be a part. Uh, the community is amazing. They are so good about bringing people in, helping people out. And if you love the game as much as we do, we've been playing this game for so long. And it's just a game that never fails to impress. And the randomizer just really takes something great and makes it, in my opinion, even better. It's like playing a new game for the first time, except that you know the levels. You know the strategy. You Well, for the most part, but you know the items. You know what's going to happen when you equip a fire flower. But with the randomizer, it just kind of takes that and shakes it all up and says, here, try again. This time, it's going to be a little different for you. So a great game, a great community, definitely something that I recommend being a part of. Even if you don't race, I don't race right now, um, but dealing commentary is just such a fun time and highly recommend that you become a part. So anyway, with that, Mitch Flower Power now going through our first hand stage that we've seen and is awarded the vanilla item of a tail. So kind of an interesting thing. A tail will mean that the runners do not have, or I'm sorry, the tail means that the runners will get a, a tail from all the hand stage levels. So each of the hand stage levels, if they do come up, there's no guarantee, our runners will not be playing all of the levels and not all of the levels in the game will be featured necessarily. Uh, if there are any beta stages, then we will call those out. We'll do our best to call those out and we will mention that. And of course, if a lost level was brought in, then that means that, of course, not all the vanilla game levels will be there either. So a very interesting place to be, but of course, we will be calling those out as we see them. Uh, Mitch Flower Power now interested in getting some more information about World 6. I think this is a good call here. Okay, the first pipe he comes to is not a required pipe and is not going to help either. It would have saved just a couple of uh, levels, but, you know, the hammer did, I think, even more in World 2. I believe it skipped three levels. So a very good place for both runners to use that. A cloud on the side of Mitch Flower Power after his Boomerang Brother fight is a huge help. So the item there is going to be very, very valuable. The hammer not going to be as valuable this time. And Mitch Flower Power with a nearly open for uh, World 6. So he's going to go ahead and take on the Super Tanks, which is the one with Boom Boom. The other tanks is a regular level, actually. But it is going to be Mitch Flower Power using some P-Speed strats to get through this once auto-scroller. We've turned those off. Ain't nobody got time for that. We just want to go fast. So Johnny Link with a bit of a problem with the Sludge Brothers in the water arena. Thankfully, no further issues with that as he does take down that that uh, Hammer Brother and is able to get his cloud as well. So we'll see if he goes for the Hammer Brother suit. Uh, looks like he's avoided it. He's going to go back and find what's in this pipe that we just saw Mitch Flower Power take, who is currently on the World 5 airship. So a interesting place for these guys right now. Johnny Link just not far behind, and if he takes the same route here, this will keep him fairly close to Mitch Flower Power. So he does see the bridge, he sees the fortress, he's going to, need to play Super Tanks. What a great call on the side of Johnny Link. That's exactly what he needed to stay within about a level, level and a half at this point. So going into World 4, get your guesses in. We've seen World 2, 1, seen World 2, seen World 6. Which one's coming up next? I gotta go with seven. I think we need some pipe maze here, especially after a world six that was so friendly, so easy to get through, like Fairless Decoy said, a fairly friendly ice world. So I gotta wait and see. I gotta wait and see what happens next because four and five could get a little long. Three can be very devilish depending on how they try, or how the pipes line up and everything. And Mitch Flower Power, with a very interesting World 5 so far. Two levels will lead to the tower. We'll see if he decides to use a cloud. 3-3 three, three first up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. And Johnny Link just trying to get through this Lemmy without any further issues. Mitch Flower Power now through his level. Johnny Link through the fight with Lemmy. Uh, in about 20 seconds, he will be starting into World 5. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power using that 20 seconds to keep himself in the lead here. 8-1 coming up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. I'm a little interested to see why he didn't take the flight pattern there. I guess he thought he could be even faster without the tail. Uh, looks like he is so far correct. Just taking a few 
pretty precautious jumps there. Not a bad decision. You have a lot of bullet bills coming at you in that small area. You don't want to glitch out because of memory issues. You don't want your screen to lag. So a great call on his part. A very meticulous yet very refined run through A1 will cause him to go into the tower. Looks like he's going for a peace speed trap without a star. That is not going to be an easy thing to do. So he will be going the old fashioned a little bit slower. But of course Mitch Flower Power is so good at those small duck jumps. Gets through the thwomps without any further issue and is moving on through the tower. Meanwhile, Johnny Link is doing his best to catch up as he has just finished off his level and will be moving on in a moment. So 3-3 three, three now down for Johnny Link. 8-1 coming up. And interesting to see. I don't know if either of these runners forgot their cloud or whatnot, but I I don't know. I have to believe that 8-1 would have been better used skipped. But then again, we haven't seen 5-9. We haven't seen Atlantis. We haven't seen a lot of the really terrifying levels. So both runners deciding to go ahead and hang on to that. They obviously know more than I do. And we'll just go from there. But anyway, another hammer comes out on the side of Mitch Flower Power. Filling some item drought, I believe. As he's gone after a few of uh, both of the Hammer Brothers here. And a P-Wing also on the side of Mitch Flower Power. So a hammer and a P-Wing on the side of Mitch Flower Power from those. And of course that will mean the pipe on the left is the one that takes you up to the top. And that is going to be a required fortress. You see a blue fortress, you're gonna play a blue fortress. A very good call on the side of Mitch Flower Power to go ahead and use that blue door or blue fortress to break the blue lock. No door three, no door four skip this time. He has one rule only, and that's get to the boom boom as quickly as you can, and the risk is not as good as the reward. So he's going to go ahead and take it the old-fashioned way, go through door six, find boom boom, take him down, and break a lock. That will be the lock that separates him from the castle. Two more levels will be the end of it, and we said it. There it is. Atlantis has come up. Mitch Flower Power is going to take an early nope and decide to come back with a cloud. So a cloud coming out, now a P-Wing. You very much expect to see it. And 7-4 has come up. So 7-4 followed, or I'm sorry, succeeded by the uh, Atlantis, the terrible water level. And uh, that is going to be Mitch Flower Power now into 7-4, which is also no longer an auto-scroller because again, we didn't want to have to deal with it. We just wanted to go fast. Johnny Link also taking the Boomerang Brothers. A very interesting call there. But with that, he will be using the Fire Flower as well. He does see the Fortress 3-1, 3-F-1, I should say. The first Fortress you come to in World 3. Now up for Johnny Link and a beautiful Peace Speed Strat as well from him. So he will be taking down Boom Boom here in seconds. Mitch Flower Power now through 7-4. And it is time for a fight with Roy. Mitch Flower Power now first into the World 7 airship. That's a very interesting thing to see. I'm sorry, World 6. I got that one backwards. World 6 airship goes for the World 6 airship. Clip does not get it. Johnny Link takes the exact same route. I think that's a very good call as he is going to use the cloud to his advantage. And then, well, he's... Okay, it looked like he was thinking about it for a moment. Uh, but he has also done the exact same thing as Mitch and will be utilizing this P-Wing through 7-4. World 7 is the next guest from DeMille. I am going to have to agree with you. I think World 7 would be a fantastic one to see. There's a lot that can go wrong in World 7, and of course that's something we like to see. So, uh, Interesting strat from Johnny Link. He had a P-Wing, and now, because he got a Fire Flower from the level, and I guess he's still underwater, so he's not technically flying, so he still has Peace Speed Strat uh, with a Fire Flower in a water level. If that makes sense, welcome to Randomizer. Either way, we've got Mitch Flower Power now going into the next world, which is World 3. So World 3 now up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. 3-8 to start, a French Vanilla. It is a correct level in a correct world, but not in the correct spot. So we call that a French Vanilla as we're a little weird like that. But anyway, Johnny Link now onto the World 6 airship. We'll also go for the clip here. Does not make it, so he will have to go the little bit of a slower route by a few seconds, and he will be looking for a fight in just one moment with Roy.
Now, Miss Flower Power, onto one of the most iconic levels, in my opinion. It is also known for the Leap of Faith or the Jesus Clip. At the very start of the level, you can clip through the top of the wall. Super tricky to do, but some runners can pull it off. It's amazing to see. And you actually pop out in this room with Boom Boom. So fun one to see, not one that we're going to see in the randomizer though. High risk, little reward, and 5F2 really isn't too terrible. So with that, Mitch Flower Power now moving on to the first pipe that he can find. And interesting, we have a level and then we have a couple of pipes. So a good call from Mitch Flower Power. Go ahead and play your level. Go ahead and get through it. Obviously you want to get through it as quickly as you can. But you're going to get through it, you're going to take on the next part, and find really the next thing you need to know, which is, of course, where do those pipes go? So with that, he will be going through 5-2, finishing it off, figuring out where the pipes are, while Johnny Link is hot on his tail. One small hiccup, and that's going to be Mitch Flower Power looking for a leadership change, as Johnny Link is going to be storming up as quickly as he can. So Mitch Flower Power now going through the pipes, wants to play a little bit of recon, uh, Johnny Link with 5F2 here. Mitch Flower Power deciding, wait, nope, need the Fortress. 3F2 does come up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. That is also another Fritch Vanilla, as it normally would be just a little bit further right and down uh, from where he currently is. And a couple of little quick backs on the side of Johnny Link does mean he doesn't run into that Dry Bones and take unnecessary damage here. Mitch Flower Power now on one of the easiest levels in the game to speed run. 3F2, just to, to avoid those carpet boos. He's already got the fire flower. Boom Boom's going down in just one moment. The Fake Jester, very entertaining commentary. I am so glad you enjoy it. Uh, I get a little into these, and these two guys are going to be worth watching from the start to the finish. I guarantee it. Uh, these guys are just so, so very good. They left the group stages with 18 seconds, differentiating them with the averages, and both guys serious veterans of this game bitch flower power needs no introduction if you know smb3 if you know speed running you know exactly who he is a several time world record holder in i believe every category which is unheard of uh, including some hacks if i understand correctly he's a finalist and a winner of the tournaments and last year he actually did win this so he is looking for a repeat for sure in this but then on the other side, you have Johnny Link, who is just a brutal runner as well. Just an absolute fantastic runner. He's a veteran of the game. He's a, a great randomizer player. He's a well-known speed runner uh, and just does a fantastic job as well. And has really shown his stuff up with the group stages. Went 5-1 and one in a very tough bracket. And then he's now taking on Mitch Flower Power and pushing him to his limits. I mean, both of these guys know one issue is going to be the game most likely and especially in bowser's castle we have three cliffs that we're going to be looking for four potentially three but well, one of them's not very serious neither is the other that's base of the escalator as well as top of the escalator clip and then you've got any means clip which is easy peasy whatever uh you know we expect everyone to get that and then you have the clip at the end, which is mac and cheese. So you got mac and cheese, DLP, or humans uh, clips, and respectively found for the people that ran found them. Except for mac and cheese, we don't know where that came from, but it sure is fun to say. So with that, you know, there's so much stuff that could happen, and that's just in Bowser's Castle. Three clips, and talking about clips, we got 7-1 on the side of Johnny Link. I believe that was a three try. It doesn't matter. First try every time. Mitch Firepower now taking down Windy. And that, of course, will be the end of Wendy as well. So Johnny Link just doing his best to catch up here. Oh, Johnny. Johnny Link deciding to go the long way around. Unfortunately, I do believe that's going to be a couple of levels he is going to have to play uh, regardless. So with that, unfortunately, he is going to have to take uh, a little bit longer on that. So we'll check back in after he finishes the lost levels. Uh, the Ice Capade is one that we like to call it. It's got a couple different names, but personally, I like the Ice Capades. It's, it makes me happy. So that's what we're going to call it this time. Mitch Flower Power now on to World 4. And a good call out by, I'm going to butcher this, I promise you, Azebebel Jeff. Guess that it was 4 next. A very nice job for sure. 
Uh, yeah, so Val 9 is absolutely correct. Johnny took a different path, bumped into a shorter level. So that is absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, I guess you're absolutely right. I guess that's not really that uh, concerning, I think, for him. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power going for an early exit on the side of... Uh... Oh, there it is. Very nice. Very nicely done. 6-5, not going to be a problem. And that is the early exit on the side of Mitch Flower Power. So no need to worry about any scary enemy sets at the very top. He's just done. He's done. He clipped out. He's done. Okay, and interestingly enough, I just looked at my notes. It looks like World 4 is up now in the World 6 spot, which does mean World 7 is going to be a vanilla World 7 in that it is in its right plus spot, uh, but it is not going to be expected for sure. I'm sure hoping. Because World 7, that is a tricky World 7, makes this a lot more fun. Callus, uh, the run is going war we, we had one early early death on the side of johnny link but then he has been fire ever since he's really been doing a great job and i'm super hopeful that he's able to pull this back uh, and make this a very tight race which we are seeing so far so there's about a level and a half difference still or i sorry i'm sorry two and a half level difference or so between the runners uh but hopefully johnny link able to pull this up just a little bit and yeah, these runners are just blazing through right now. Looking at this enemy set, I think a very good call on the side of Mitch Flower Power to go ahead and go for that clip out of the level. Not an easy thing to do. One of the harder ones for sure. But it is... Okay, so it looks like Johnny Link is going to be so far so good. He's got the Koopa Shell. He's going to use that, go up. Hopefully no Fire Nippers. Okay. That is a very scary place to be because if you do take damage there, obviously you, you you lose the power to fly. And that, of course, is a huge problem on the side of Johnny Lee. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power showing off with a P-Wing that he used and will be going on from here. We will have to wait and see if that builds a bridge. It does not. Both fortresses are required. That's a great place to be as 5, I'm sorry, 4F1 does come up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. And that is going to be a little bit of something he's going to have to work through here as the Thwomps are not friendly towards him and he is going to have to play just a little bit more carefully. Johnny Link taking on 4-4 with a small Mario. A very scary place to be as he is... Very prone to being sniped by a lack of two there. Thankfully, that is going to be the end of the level for him. And we'll look to see if he does go into a Hammer Brother fight here. Uh, looks like he, of course, will. Mitch Flower Power now onto the World 2 airship. That, of course, is going to be the ever-infamous Iggy. Because he has a propensity of hitboxing you. Where he comes out of his Koopa Spin and you hit him too quickly. You will take damage even though he should. So now that is the end of World 4, end of World 6 for Mitch Flower Power, and he will be moving on to World 7, which is the Pipe Maze, which is a equalizer in its own right, and is going to be interesting to see for sure. So Johnny Link also taking a P-Wing. I think this is not a bad decision at all. 7F1 still hasn't come up, and that's a very good one to have a P-Wing on, uh, as that will be the fastest way that you actually can beat the world. Or the fortress, I should say. And, uh, yeah, so not a bad decision at all. Johnny Link now into his fight with Boom Boom. Not quite able to get Boom Boom quite where he wants him. But it looks like three hits later will be the end of it for Boom Boom. And that means Johnny Link with a mid-air catch on the orb will be moving on as well to 4F1. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power now playing the maze game of figuring out which pipe is the right one. We have a pipe. It takes us to the third island, the promised land, if you will. And Mitch Flower Power just really needs to figure out where this fortress is. The hammer's not going to be necessary. It's not going to help here. He has to take on the fortress. Of course, we'll have to wait and see where uh, that fortress is. And we'll see if there is any divergence in the path of the 
or any divergent in the path of runners take to find that fortress. So should be an interesting thing for sure. As Johnny Link now looking for a fight with AD. Mitch Flower Power utilizing that time. Hey, I found World 3 or the Third Island in World 7. Might as well play a level one here. He does. He takes it down. Easy peasy. Doesn't have to worry about that again. Finds a bit of a dead end on that first pipe. So he will use this other one. We'll have to wait and see if he does. Okay, looks like there is one pipe that will take the runners to the fortress. And that, of course, is at the bottom left-hand corner. I like to think of World 7 as like the world map. So if you think about it in terms of North America, South America, on the left, Europe, Africa in the middle, and then Asia and Australia on the bottom right, then uh, it looks like South America does hold the keys to the kingdom or at least the lock that takes us to the castle. And then, of course, we'll be Bowser's Kingdom right after. So, Mr. Flower Power using a boss strat on the Piranha, but a uh, little bit of an issue for him there as the uh, runner, or as Mario continues to run for a moment after he does land. So, unfortunately, that does mean a little bit more injury on the side of Mr. Flower Power, but he's been in this situation before. He's familiar with being small. No problems at all. Meanwhile, Johnny Leak now into the pipe maze as well. We'll see if he makes any choices here. He is going to figure out, okay, I know where the fortress is. Now I just got to find the pipe. And I could be wrong, but I sure believe he is on a very good track so far. Okay, he is going to be finding out some of the same information that Mitch Flower Power just made. And he is going to be trying to catch up as quickly as he possibly can. Still a lot left to go, but time is certainly running out. If there's time to make a move, it's time to do it now. Looks like 6-3 on the side of Mitch Flower Power as he is going to be burn burning through here as quickly as he, of course, possibly can. And that will be the end of his level as he is able to hit the pipe no problem at all. Meanwhile, Johnny Link now in the game of guessing which pipe is the right one. And he's, okay, maybe taking on a piranha plant here. Okay, no piranha plant. He said, no, I'm going to go through here. I believe this is the mushroom. It is. If he takes the left one, uh, he might have to play the Prana, or he might be able to do a screen skip. No, no screen skip for him. He will have to play the Prana level. Hopefully it's a good item, though. I think he's already got a Hammer Brothers suit, so maybe if he could get a Cloud here, that sure would be nice. Little nippers, no problem for Johnny Lee. It's a good key on the side of Mitch Flower Power if he does hold that to event. The Ludwig Von Koopa. We, of course, will look forward to seeing the Words that are used for Mitch Flower Power in a Tanuki suit. The cutscene has a special message for Tanuki suits as well as frogs, and we of course like to see it. So Johnny Link looks like he is going to have to be very cautious and very quick here to try to get through these levels. And what a terrifying uh, beginning of this World 7, as both runners have found, I believe, 6-3, and then they found... 7 8 and then they found 7 f2 so not easy levels like leading up to really just the end of world 7 now mitch flower power has defeated the level already but i haven't seen if he has a music box or not so he might actually have to require uh, or he might actually have to use a uh, maybe a star or something to try to get through this product because i don't know if he has the music box if he doesn't then he's going to have to play through the Prana, whereas Johnny Link picking up that music box a moment ago will mean he doesn't have to, to use that. So damage boost on the side of Johnny Link, he will take a mushroom right after to help protect himself. And he will be going through 7-8 as quickly as possible. He got a music box from the Piranha. So, okay, looks like Mitch Flower Power does have a music box then. Thank you so much for that information. And... The fake jester is absolutely correct. Mitch has two music boxes, not just one. And it looked like he was going for a clip jump there. Not something we see at all during a randomizer seed for no reason other than usually people just fly over the level. But Mitch Flower Power now into his fight with Ludwig Von Koopa. And we are going to be going... Ooh, easy peasy Ludwig Von Koopa. Easy. As we go into World 8 here, we are going to be taking our guesses as to which or how many bridges it takes to get to Bowser. Now there are fortresses, four of them, four fortresses in World 8, 
And that means that there could be up to four bridges built from the runners entering, uh, excuse me, entering Bowser's Valley and then finding, of course, Bowser's castle and taking him down. So up to four. And there's also the possibility of negative one. And some people will use that as if you come in where the super tanks normally would be. And the pipe, of course, is to the left. If you come up where super tanks is, there could be something to the left. And there could be a bridge separating you from that. So if you want to go negative one, that's what that means. Or if you want to say two, but one's not required, there you go. And that could be very interesting for sure for our runners to see. So I'm going to have to go with a two bridge required for Bowser's Castle. But Mitch Firepower just making a show of it so far as Air Force is going to be going down quickly here. And Boom Boom just not long for this world as he does take get defeated gives up the orb and now mitch flower power on to the next things that this world eight does have to offer meanwhile johnny link now trying to figure out what he wants to do here and he will go ahead and just go in his mushroom although he does have some very good items in his inventory decides not to use them yet and we'll just go through the old-fashioned route Meanwhile, Mitch Firepower does see two fortresses, decides not to play them, though. Says, you know what? I don't know if they're required yet. If they're not required, I'm not playing them. And then we do have our answers. We have one. One bridge that is required for our runners to take on Bowser. And interestingly enough, the first one Mitch Firepower comes to is a fortress. There is only one fortress in the game. Well, one fortress icon in the game for World 8. And this is the one you normally would find in that fortress. So 8F1, interestingly enough, is going to be a pretty easy one for Mitch Firepower to get to. But it could also be the gatekeeper to, that takes us to Bowser's Castle. So no one cycle on the side of Mitch Firepower. Terribly tough to do. The Dry Bones, just not a friendly enemy. And Mitch Firepower will now have to wait for the escalator lift to start. Or the uh, conveyor belt to start, I suppose. And Johnny Link now looking to punch his ticket into World 8 as well. So he is going to be taking that wand, going to the Bowser's Kingdom, and will be looking for the giant turtle. Interesting call on the side of Mitch Firepower. Decided, hey, you know what? I took on a fortress. It was 8F1. That usually takes me further in World 8. Why not? And unfortunately, that is not going to be the correct tank or the correct port. So Mitch Firepower now going to find the tanks level, which means that is also not going to be required because there's no boss at the end of it and there's no way to break a line. So Mitch Firepower now into the dark room finds the Navy. It is the Navy. And Mitch Firepower now in the Navy going to be working on getting through this as quickly as he can. Meanwhile, Johnny Link doing his absolute best to catch up here. If there is any issue with this, if this does not build the bridge, then Mitch Firepower is going to have to play, I believe, every fortress in this World 8. And Johnny Link, meanwhile, is also in World 8, and there's a lot that can happen here. Johnny Link, if he makes a good decision here, if he makes this call right, and goes to the correct fortress, which is, of course, the one on the left, so if he sees that tanks and play it, unfortunately, he hasn't, but if he saw that tank, and if he played it, that would mean a huge swing in his favor, because the first time he would have found it, that would, of course, been the one that he needs. Unfortunately, it does look like the other uh, fortress, the Navy, is the required one. Misfire figured it out, and that is going to be clip try one, number one, no good, so he does drop. That is an easy clip to try for, as you don't lose hardly any time at all. And Mitch Firepower, of course, trying that as well, knows the secrets. He has whatever he wants in this game. And currently, that is a win over Johnny Link. As we are going into the fight with Bowser, we are going to have a split-second fight. He's going to come in and then leave as quickly as he came in. And that will be the end of Game 1. Of course, I'd like to remind you that this is a best of three. So we are definitely, definitely not done yet. Bowser's done this time, but we've got another seed coming up in just a moment as we do have Mitch Flowerpower finishing up here in about 10 seconds. So a very fantastic race on the side of Mitch Firepower and Johnny Link. Uh, wow. Stayed in it as long as he possibly could. That early, early death in 3-1. Had a Bluebird go just a little rogue on him 
And unfortunately, that is the difference that we see here. There is just nothing more. And with that, Miss Flower Power does take game number one. 38.55 is his official race time. Uh, race time. I didn't repeat myself. Race times, race time. Uh, anyway, again, if that makes sense, welcome to Randomizer. That's what we're here for. So either way, uh, it looks like... Johnny Luke's just going to have to play his game in the second one. He had one issue. He got it out of the way. No more issues there. And now he's going to have to do his best to get through game two and faster than Mitch Flower Power. So not a small task for sure. These guys are extraordinary in this game. And game two literally could go either direction. And, of course, we will have to wait just a moment to see that. I like the decision here from Johnny Link to go ahead and play this. Go ahead and get through. You're almost at Bowser's Castle. Get that extra experience. Get those nerves out. Get that confidence back up. And let's go. Johnny Link. Okay, going to go back to Bowser. And a question from Roll in the chat. Did This is not still group stages, actually. For some reason, we don't have the layout. Uh, updated yet had a lot of stuff going on from my understanding so uh, group stage is not accurate it is actually brackets and these two guys are fighting for a spot in the semifinals. so this is or the uh, quarterfinals sorry they're fighting for a spot in the quarterfinals the winner of this of course will be taking on the winner of our match at 5 p.m tonight where macobra will be taking on glutamic acid in a stellar showdown it's going to be hype you're going to want to be there for sure but yeah, we are in the bracket stages. Losers go home. Winners go on to the quarterfinals. And we are looking forward to seeing how this shakes out. Very good runners. And actually, the last two years, Mitch Flower Power and Macobra found each other in the finals. Best they can do this time is to find themselves in the quarterfinals. So we will have a different finals this year. And if that's not exciting, I don't know how to help you. Because that is the epitome of how excitement happens here. And we are, of course, looking for that for sure. Yeah, 38 minutes from Mitch Flower Power. Nearly 39 minutes and an exceptional run. I mean, no deaths except for the intended ones. And uh, I think Mitch Flower Power is going to try to get me not to roll the next seed because that was uh, very, very terrible. But anyway, uh, at least there wasn't a 7-5 with the Fire Nipper. I mean, I, I'm just saying. Anyway, so Johnny Link now with a fire, a fire flower into Bowser's castle. The randomized fireballs just not going to be a factor. 35 balls later, that will be the end of Bowser. And a little bit of a problem on the side of Johnny Link. This is such a weird angle to come from because in the bottom route, the three walls or the three floor sections are actually raised up an entire block. So. That's going to be a little bit of an interesting place for him to be, uh, but he gets the fire flower, fire flower knockout. No problem at all. Get your GGs into the chat for Johnny Link, and we will be getting game two set up here as quickly as we can. Don't go anywhere. You are not going to want to miss this. I can't wait to see race number two, though. I'm hoping it's even better. I, I really, truly hope that it's a, a bit of a better race uh, for both runners. You know, get the nerves out of the way. You're in the tournament now. Let's run. You've got a lot of respect for the other player. Both of these guys, a lot of respect for each other, uh, which is something that we know and we love. And, okay, we entered World 3. We got variants. Both runners took a different path. And now Johnny Link. Okay, Johnny Link with a bit of a risky gamble here is going to play the three levels, take on the pipe, and then move on. He thinks he's got a chance to bypass the fortresses here and move on. Hammer or I'm sorry, a Hammer Brother hand stage comes out with a star. So the hand level will be stars in this race. And that is, of course, interesting to see for sure. Johnny Link now going back. I don't understand. Okay, looks like he's going to go back and maybe just check the pipe real quick. Okay, he was right all along. He doesn't need to worry about the other pipe. Go back, play the next level. We're going to have a bit of a seek up here as Mitch Firepower now going into the 10 panel. Which is our first beta of the stage. And now both runners now into the exact same beta level. Just seconds separating these two. That is a routing change. That is an item difference. There is no difference between these runners right now. 
These guys are good, and these times are hot. We are going to be looking forward to an exceptional race here once again. And the runners know that that fortress is not required. Only thing that is required is this 3-4 level. And these runners are going to be blow blowing through it as quickly as they possibly can, uh, which is just incredible to see. It's You love to see it. You really, truly do. You love to see it as these runners just are so good and so crisp. And Johnny Lee, for the small issue there, no worries, is out of the water now and is going to be blowing through as quickly as can be. And Forrest Kitty, I do apologize. I missed your comment just a moment ago. It is my pleasure. I am so happy to be here. Uh, this is a great race. These guys are so good. And I'm excited, honestly. I am so excited to be here because it's a great time for sure. So World 4 Airship now up on the side of Mitch Firepower. Right behind him is Johnny Link. Now Mitch Firepower does have a fireball or a fire suit. This is just not going to matter on an Earthquakey Windy. And she's the full thing, man. She is a five hitter, no quitter, Earthquaking, Arena Shaking, bad coupling this time. Uh, but that's just not going to matter. Mitch Flower Power taking down Windy super fast. Johnny Link has to be a little careful here, though. A hitbox would be a huge problem. And okay. That one came out. I was a very uh very concerned there because there's a lot of really really bad things that happen with a windy fight especially when the arena is this one uh from world four and thankfully that wasn't a problem for johnny link he kept cool he kept patient he got in he finished the race he finished windy off we're good there he's going to be moving on into world five which is where mitch firepower just showed up and five three awaiting them so five three has been required in both of our races so far and uh, just wow that's one of the longest levels in the game because of the time it takes you basically have to play two levels back to back you go down the pipe you go to the left you go down the pipe you go to the right you go through the pipe you finish the level and that just takes a long time johnny link deciding to take a little bit of insurance for the road does go back for that starman item and will be able to burn through this enemy set with no problems at all and taking a little bit of a cautious route through here that's a great decision you don't know exactly what's coming up and you don't want to take any unnecessary deaths here for sure niche flower power now into 4f1 second time we've seen this fortress today that is not that uncommon we have a lot of 4f1 uh, or a lot of fortresses that we'll have to play because it is a, a warpless 80 percent run and kind of all fortresses if you think about it they're not all required but sometimes because of routing and such they could be so very interesting to see for sure what happens next but uh, finds it hilarious how hammer brothers and a randomizer are so weird half the time they commit uh, what is that hairy kick no not anyway and moving on uh, they take care of themselves in that fight uh, by jumping actually below the stage so they think there's two platforms they're not uh, mario wins it's an easy easy peasy and i'm gonna have to reiterate what our borrelia said never thought five three was too long mostly it seemed like too short a time to keep the boot I have got to agree with that. We actually have people right now asking to change the Karibo shoe with, uh, like, make it into a power item. So I'm hoping that that actually happens. That it's one that can go into your inventory that you can, can equip and keep through levels. I don't know if that's feasible. I don't know if it's possible, but it sure would be interesting to see. And they're wanting to add that with the... Uh, with some of the different changes for the randomizers. So hopefully we'll get the Karibo shoe at some point as a, as a static item, one that they can keep and hold on to, uh, because that sure would be fun to see for sure. So Johnny Link now into the Twisty Tower and will be going up as quickly as he can to join in World 5's uh, Cloud World. And Mitch Firepower now on to 3-3. Again, the second time we've seen this level. Uh, no boss pass as far as I can tell. If so, oh. Looks like we actually got a cheap cheap on this one. Not a very friendly one, but of course, Mitch Flower Power will be going through here, no problems at all. And that star just adds a little bit more protection in this regard. And I am definitely honored. I think uh, Joe Buck as in the father or the son? 
I, I grew up in the St. Louis area, so I have to ask that for clarification's sake. But either way, Rich Flower Power now going to go back and take on a Hammer Brother, which Johnny Link is going to avoid, actually. So Johnny Link now headed through the level that we just saw Mitch Flower Power on, as Mitch Flower Power is going to be going back, and now it's taking on the Fortress in just one moment. So, interesting place for him to be, for sure. 6-8 on the side of Johnny Link. Uh, the green in the Iceland, always a fun one for sure. Johnny Leak now through here. Okay, Joe Buck was the son, Jack Buck was the father. Thank you, sorry about that. I did say I grew up in the St. Louis area, um, but not a huge baseball fan. So sorry about that. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, very appreciate it. But anyway, so Johnny Leak now taking on the Hammer Brothers. Interesting, he avoided it at first. That, of course, is a peewee, though. And misses out on the Fire Flower there as it did to spawn right as, or showed up as soon as he was leaving the level. So either way, he still has a tail into 3-3. Not a bad decision to have. And Mitch Flower Power now onto the airship for World 5, and that is going to hold Roy. So a few hits here is going to take care of Roy. We're going to be joining World 3 in just one moment. Get your guesses in the chat as to what you think that is. We've had three. We've had five. And what do we got next? I'm going to have to go with odds first. And I'm going to say World 1. I'm going to agree with Mike as a fighter. I think World 1 would be a fantastic thing to see here. As Johnny Link now working through 4F2 in just one moment. Diesel Pilot, if you are having a stroke, so am I. Because I saw the exact same thing. Looks like it's flickered a few times on us. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But... All right, Mitch Flower Power now into World 1. Another multi-level fortress require or multi-fortress requirement on the side of World 1. And Mitch Flower Power with the tail, uh, he's going to be burning through this with no problems at all. So, very interesting. Uh, he does have the tail. That is the fastest way he can get through Fort Knox. And he is blowing through it like it's nothing. So... A great call on the side of the Mitch Flower Power to have that item there. Okay, the team is already on it. We knew they were. Speed Gaming is so good. If you're not already following all their channels, do it. Seriously, they have such great content. They've got a... I, I was being told all the stuff that they had earlier, and I had to pull up the website because there's so much going on. Uh, we've got Luigi's Mansion, any percent, no out of bounds. We've got a Star Wars Episode 1 racer. We've got New Super Mario Bros. World. We've got Super Metroid Multi-Category. Multi SMB3 Randomizer right here, right after this. 5 p.m. SMB3 Randomizer at Speed Gaming 2. Uh, Speed Gaming 3 with Star Wars Episode 1 racer. And Speed Gaming 5 here in like three minutes is going to be doing an MP2 Random Race League. Or Race Weekly. My bad. Weekly Race. Uh, you just don't want to miss this. I mean, come on. Like, there's so much good stuff here. And Speed Gaming does such a fantastic job of putting it all on. And they have confirmed they are looking at it. Uh, they've got very good people working on it. So the layout should be back to its normal stuff here in just one moment. Mitch Flower Power putting on a clinic for 8-2. That's how you do it. He's through it. He's done. It's great. Dimmel, I definitely appreciate it. That is very kind of you. Uh, you are the kind of person that you like to see in the world. So thank you so much for that and for being a wonderful person. It is amazing. Johnny Leak now with the Tanuki suit is going on to the fight with Boom Boom. Took a little bit longer. Unfortunately, that will mean that he does have to take a little bit longer catching up here uh, as he did not have the tail going into the fortress. No problems with it all, though. He will be only playing the one... Oh, I apologize. It's actually the other fortress that's required, and that is, of course, the super tanks. Starman item does come up on the side of Mitch Firepower. He gets the Starman. He is ready to go into World 5's airship, and we'll be looking for a fight with Larry here in just moments. Meanwhile, Johnny Link now keeping that Tanuki suit through the super tanks. That is going to be the difference. And he is going to be going after the lock now. Thank you so much from Un Phantasma Moss. Really appreciate you so much for doing that. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the, the wonderful help. 
and for keeping us all organized and on track and everything. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And now Johnny Link trying to fly through 8-2. Gets part of the way through. And now one more final jump. He'll take a P speed fly here. Very nicely done. And that, of course, is the end of 8-2 and the Angry Sun. Meanwhile, Mitch Flowerpower now on to the castle through the fight. He's done. He's on to World 4. Get your guesses in real quick. I got to go with 7. Still keeping the odds in. And a Starman comes up for the Princess at that point. Johnny Leak now going through 6-1 here with the Tanuki Suit. That is going to be the loss of a Tanuki Suit. The gain of a Fire Flower. And a level with Boss Bass. You love to see it. Uh, that is a great item to have as you can take down Boss Bass super quick. Had a little bit of a cutback. Great decision there. Boss Bass could have been going for a gulp if he was a little too hasty. So Johnny Leak now onto a fight with a Boomerang Brother. It will be a Starman. He decides to jump down in the level, so now Johnny Link has to be patient. And Mitch Flower Power now onto a fight with a 6F2. Boom, boom. So World 7 still has a lot of secrets to unfold. 1230, we are beginning our World 4 here. Okay, just kidding. World 7, super easy. As Mitch Flower Power does take on his fortress, and that is the end of it. Meanwhile, 6 5 now on the side of Mitch Flower Power, as he's going to be looking to try to get through this as quickly as he can. He's going for another early exit on this level. We'll see if he's able to get it. This, of course, would take him. Oh, very nicely done. That is the quickest way you could possibly get through this level uh, if you do it correctly and if you do it fast. And Mitch Flower Power is just on fire. It is a super free World 7, a super easy, no problems at all. Mitch Flower Power, just making this look way too easy, by the way. This is ridiculous. He is on fire. He's nailed a couple clips super fast. He is playing this seed like it's nothing at this point. Now, Johnny Link entering World 7 as well. He is going to be doing his best to catch up here. World 8 is coming up still, so he does have a chance at World 8 if he makes some risky calls. Johnny Link now trying to figure out where this World 3 is, or Island 3 is. And a lot of pipes does come up for Johnny Link. Still nothing that causes him any worry. Okay, he's got the penthouse. He's got a fortress coming up that he has to find. He's still working through the pipe maze. Meanwhile, Mitch Firepower burning through his airship that does normally have Windy in it. And that is going to be the end of Mitch Firepower here in, or I'm sorry, Mitch Firepower is going to bring the end of Ludwig von Koopa in just another couple hits. That was a big boy. And Mitch Firepower now going into World 5. We've had 3, 5, 1, and 7. And now we are going into World 5 of the Randomizer. Get your guesses in. Where do you think we're going next? I got to go back to the middle and say World 4. I think that's going to be very interesting. Uh, as our runners have to go through World 4, it could be very linear. And it's really going to depend on the fortresses for sure. So a world six with three forts would definitely be interesting. I was kind of hopeful for a three fort world seven. Unfortunately, there was only one, I believe. Okay, so world six has to come up next. And so far, we've got at least one fortress at the beginning. One fortress on the bottom left. So this is two fortresses so far. This could be very interesting. Blue Bomber, yes. Uh, world five actually happened second. We had that one come up. Uh, we had three, then five, one, then seven. We got all the odd ones out of the way. And now we're on to world six. Johnny Link now working on getting through six, five on his own. So hopefully he is able to do that here in just a moment. As it's not a terribly complicated level for our runners, but it is one that will take some time. As Johnny Link is now going to have to avoid this Paragoomba and do his best to fly up in the level and finish off just the pipe, of course, being directly above him. So he will be taking a Koopa Troopa shell with him in just one moment. Speaking of Koopa Troopa shells, we got Mitch Firepower on to the 1-5 Beta. Does use a Koopa shell to keep himself safe, as those piranhas do like to be a little bit messy for sure. Mitch Firepower now moving on, and we do have another Fortress. We do have a 10 panel, though, but normally World 6 would have a 10 panel because there are 10 levels in World 6, so no information gathered here yet to my knowledge. 
I don't believe we have any insight as to whether or not there are three fortresses. We will either see another fortress or we'll have another tin panel. And of course, we'll have to come back to that in just one moment. Meanwhile, Mitch Flower Power just burning through 5-4. I don't even get a chance to say the name of the level before they are done. And with that, still no intel, as far as I can tell, because we don't have a very good clear look at the world map yet. Mitch Flower Power now with a hammer. I'm going to be curious to see if he uses that on the rock at the top there. Okay, looks like he definitely will. He does have an anchor. We should probably mention what that is in the original game. That, of course, would keep you... Oh, my goodness. That's a World 6 jet. All right, World 6. If you get that hammer, you are done with this. That was an early hammer brother fight for Mitch Flower Power, meaning an early hammer on the rock. With that, we are going into World 6 here. We got two, and we got four to choose from. There ain't a lot of time left, folks. I'm going to have to go with two here. Send him to the desert this time. The rock is maybe a factor. We'll have to wait and see on that, of course. And with that... Oh, dear. Johnny Link doing his best to catch up here, but Mitch Flower Power just blowing this seed out of the water. He's making it look way too easy. And 17 and a half minutes will be the end of World 5 for Mitch Flower Power. So 18 minutes in. He will be in the next world. Again, get your guesses in. Uh, because you, this is oh, this is becoming a very quick race uh, for John, Mitch Flower Power at this point. Johnny Lee has avoided the Navy so far. Uh, he is going to have to go back and play that, though, as that is the required fortress if there is one. Uh, we did not see whether or not a bridge had to be built, but everything was ready. And the only fortress we saw did have a lock that was very visible and definitely not in the way. So that did mean that he was going to have to play... Uh, a little bit smarter there, uh, and he was able to avoid the fortress altogether because it just was not required. So a very good clean run for Mitch Flower Power so far as he enters the Air Force. Johnny Link avoiding. Okay, looks like Johnny Link is going to avoid the fortress. And I, I stand corrected. There is actually two fortress locks on the left-hand side of this map. So Johnny Link is maybe making a really good decision here to try to give himself a little bit of a heads up um, and a, a bit of an advantage going into uh, World 8. He does have a very good chance of catching up here if World 8 has any problems for Mitch Flower Power at all. First Fortress played is not required as far as the castle is concerned, but as far as the route is concerned, I don't know if it's necessary or not. We have one lock, but look at that. We've got 7-5. This is, uh, looks like a 2-1. Okay, so we've got the Mimic blocks and we've got some giant creatures. Not the worst thing in the world. There's definitely some, uh, some enemy sets that could go a lot worse here. Uh, but for Mitch Flower Power, not going to be a huge issue. Going to take the first pipe. Going to go on and grab his item. Okay, looks like a mushroom. That is a good place for a star to show up. And that it's not. It is a terrible item to have here, as a big Mario with a star cannot go through the pipes unless he's running at full piece speed. So, interesting for sure, and he's still holding onto a Koopa shell, uses it beautifully, and looks like he may be going for an underbridge clip here, uh, which is a great call. Oh, looked like he was going for a big jump there, uh, where it looked like he was going for a memory bit where he could clip into it and jump over and actually avoid having to go all the way around again. So Mitch Flower Power now working on 7-5 clip and Johnny Link now going to be uh, joining him as quickly as he can. A beautiful effort by Mitch Flower Power. Only, I want to say, five or six times and Mitch Flower Power was able to na nail that clip and get into the next level. Now we do have a couple fortresses to choose from here. This is our world three, or our world with the three fortresses. So Mitch Flower Power is going to have to make a decision here. Obviously, you play this one because that is, in fact, a fortress in the way. So you want to play the ones, obviously, that are in your route. And Mitch Flower Power is going to have to figure out if this is the right one or if he has to go the long way around. So it looks like the fort was not required on the side of Johnny Link. So that is a level he did not have to play. You love to see it. That is a little bit of time gained back. 
And now just a few levels behind still is Johnny Lee. And just really doing a great job in this in this race so far. Uh, that Fortress, not a bad decision. We don't know if it's required or not. Making a really good call there. And with that, Mish Firepower now moving on. He does have the answer he was looking for. Johnny Link's going to be looking for the same thing. 7-5 coming up for him. He's got the Fire Flower suit. We'll see if he goes for a pipe clip here. Does not. Going to go through the old-fashioned way. Not a problem at all. And he will be going through with a Koopa shell. Interesting to see. Hammer on the side of Mitch Flower Power on that coin ship. And we'll see if he goes back. Okay, he does. He goes back to find the pipe. What a great call on his part, as that will, of course, take him to the end of World 4, and his fight with Iggy does begin. So World 1 airship coming up now for Mitch Flower Power. An easy one, no classic one. You like to see it. And now we are getting ready to go into World 7, which, of course, this randomizer race is number 2. We are going back to the desert. Johnny Link able to shoot some fireballs, but not grab the ice blocks. There we go. Finally able to get through that. And we'll see if he goes through a clip here as well. It is a fast way to get through this. Looks like he's going to try it. I'm going to give it a couple efforts here. So far, not quite there for Johnny Link. Hopefully he will get this here in just a moment. Meanwhile, on Mitch Power Power screen, we have a wild Tanuki appears. Come on. Johnny Link now able to get through 7-5 just a few seconds later than Mitch Flower Power did, but still able to make that clip and still looking good so far. Johnny Link now finishing off a fight with the Boomerang Brother. Does take a mushroom and we'll have to determine what he wants to do here. Uh, we'll go after the Fortress, I'm sure, but I'm not sure about those Boomerang Brothers. As he just got caught up in a little bit of a marathon, might rethink not playing one of them. Of course, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, not a whole lot of items that could be useful here. Obviously, Hammer Brother suits are nice. The hammers aren't bad, but going into World 2, you'll have to wait and see if it's useful or not. At this point, it's hard to tell. And 7-8 now on the side of Mitch Flower Power. So he'll be using that Peace Speed strat as quickly and as efficiently as he can. He'll pick up a Fire Flower, though, and we'll now go through the uh, first pipe to get himself into a bit of a shortcut. Johnny Link now doing the exact same thing that jo uh, Mitch Flower Power did. He's going to be going back, going through a pipe, coming out where a 4F2 four, four normally would be, and Johnny Link will be taking on the the coin ship as well and taking it down with the fire flower so very nicely done on his side Mitch Flower Power having just a bit of an issue here as he does have to get through his world 5 level and finally does after the lack to giving him a bit of an issue but 5-7 stands no match for Mitch Flower Power so now he is through that Johnny Link now doing his best to catch up as well world 1 airship just not much longer for Johnny Link and Mitch Flower Power now into where the pyramid level normally would be as he takes on 5-6 with the Parabeetles and an untimely, unfortunate death on the side of Mitch Flower Power. Not something we see, but of course that rock will not grow back and Mitch Flower Power will be joining, or will be going back into 5-6 in just one moment. Meanwhile, Johnny Link finishing up World 6, going into World 7. He's going to be looking at the desert scene and will be doing his best to get caught up to Mitch Flower Power as quickly as possible. Mitch Flower Power not having it will go with a 5-6 P-Wing strat where he'll just fly over the level and pick up speed where he can on the different blocks. So with that, he will be through 5-6. Meanwhile, Johnny Link now into his fight with 1-6, one, one of the first levels you'll see at the beginning of the game, and will be trying his best to get a piece uh, Actually, he's going to have to go a little bit longer because the Fire Flower cannot go through uh, like you normally would. In the vanilla game, you could actually jump on a Koopa and continue on. But with the enemy set that we have, we don't always know if he's going to be there. So you don't take that risk. Mitch Flower Power into the World 6 airship. Missed a jump there, but will immediately get his tail back. And we'll be going into his fight with Morton in just one moment.
So now Johnny Link into 7-8, doing his best to keep his Fire Flower as quickly and as much as he can. Uh, he's going to have to be careful here. And go ahead and get your guesses in into the chat as to how many bridges you think will it take to get our runners to Bowser and Valley in the Valley. And I'm going to have to go with two. Uh, we had one last time. Could be zero. Could be one. Could be two. Up to four. And of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Mitch Flower Power now into the fight with World 8. It's going to be interesting for sure to see what happens next. Uh, the time just running out for Johnny Lee. Mitch Flower Power, as good as he's always been, 27 minutes in. He's going to be going into Bowser's Castle, Kingdom, whatever. And uh, just not a whole lot of time left in this run. Going to go up to the Navy ship first. That is going to be 5F2 on Mitch Flower Power's side. And he is going to be taking it down as quickly as he comes into it. Johnny Link now working on his as well. We just saw Mitch Flower, Pay Mitch Flower Power take on 5-7. Now we've got Johnny Link there. Not a whole lot of time separating these two runners, but unfortunately just a little too much. Um, and Johnny Link is going to have to pull off something amazing in World 8 to have a chance here. But, of course, the game is not done yet. The game is not done yet. We still have a World 8 to go through on the side of Mitch Flower Power. And, of course, Johnny Link going to figure out, yeah, he has hammers. You might as well use them there. And he'll have to play a Hammer Brother and then a 3-panel. And then he will be moving on to World 8 as well. Rich Flower Power using the Damage Boost Strat to get through 6F1. And an unfortunate death means he will have to play this again. So a little bit of a problem there for Mitch Flower Power. Besides, he doesn't actually want to play 6F1. So he's going to go back and say, hey, you know what? I should probably figure out where Bowser is first. So he's going to go through the game of guessing and figuring out which pipe takes him to Bowser and how many bridges is it to get to and through Bowser. Okay, interestingly, Mitch Flower Power now found a tank. Is going to go ahead and jump in. Does find that he has a level that he's going to have to play. That's 5F1. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and play this Fortress. I think that's a good decision. You're already here. It's not an easy place to get back to. There's only one pipe that takes you there. If 5F1 is required, then he's already got it done. And that's going to be a big thing, I think, coming up as these Fortresses are just getting knocked down bit by bit. So currently all we know is that two Fortresses have been played on the side of Mitch Flower Power. But we still don't have an answer as to where Bowser is and how many bridges are currently there. So Johnny League now going into World 8 will have none of the knowledge that Mitch Flower Power does. But we'll have to figure out just how fast he can possibly get through World 8. And now we have it. The fortresses that Mitch Flower Power has played are not required. So 5F2 and 5F1 not required in terms of bridges being built. Now, I say it like that because there is a possibility that the lock was blocking them from going further in the route. And if that's the case, then yes, it's still a necessary fortress. We just can't know that. So 3F1 coming up on the side of Mitch Flower Power. 5F1 finishing off on, or 5F2, I should say, finishing off on Johnny Link. And that, of course, will be the end of his fortress as Mitch Flower Power looking to go for a world or world three fortress one door five to try to get an item try to get a power up something or another doesn't get it and now johnny link going a different route interesting to see now into the tanks he's going to take an intentional death here just so that he could get into uh, the fortress a little bit quicker hopefully as this is a hand level okay Okay, 3F1 not required. So that means the two levels that we've seen Mitch Flower Power and Johnny Link play, one of those is required. So now Johnny Link already saw where a fortress was. If he had played the Air Force, which we see Mitch Flower Power doing here, 6F1 could be required. And in fact, I think we're getting to the point where it is required. Unfortunately, Johnny Link did not play it. He got dissuaded after the hand level and unfortunately has gone after 5f1 uh, but that is of course not going to be required either so mitch Flower power now onto 6f1 i do believe this is it this is going to have to be something at least uh i 
think, yeah, I think there's just nothing more left. Mitch Firepower looking for his final fight with Boom Boom. The fight with Bowser coming up soon. Johnny Link just playing an exceptional game. Both runners have done a fantastic job. Uh, yeah, and that's correct. The tank there is not required. The tanks here is not required. So, okay, Mitch Firepower deciding to go ahead and play it. It's not that long of a level. If you have any issues and you have to come back, then yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare situation. But anyway, he's going to go ahead and clear it out the first time. Johnny Link now figuring out, wait a second, 7-4 is not a fortress. That's not going to be necessary. So he's going to be looking for an early exit here as well. And of course, this enemy will allow you to do that as it cannot take damage. His flower power now finishing off the tanks. He is going to be going into the fight with Bowser in just one moment. Johnny Link now thinking, wait, maybe I need to backtrack. Oh, wait, no, I found a fortress. Let's play 3F1. We already know that that is not a required fortress. Unfortunately, he will find that out here in just a little bit. Meanwhile, Mitch Firepower has taken out all of the fortresses he could possibly find. And that is going to be a fight with Bowser here in just moments. So GG's are going to be coming out soon for our runners. Just exceptional performances on both sides. Really, really great. And we look forward to seeing Mitch Firepower take on the winner of Macobra versus Glutamic Acid here in just, a, well, within the next week, I do believe. Uh, so just exceptional. Both runners doing a very good job. Johnny Link, unfortunately, I love the idea of him going after that first play and maybe thought it was too apparent. Uh, he has not seen Mitch Flower Power done yet. So obviously you play till the end of the game. You play to finish, you play to win. Now it looks like Johnny Link figuring out, wait a second, Maybe I should have played this all along as the 6F1 is still available on the side of Johnny Link. He'll take an early exit. Mitch Flower Power is still working on a mac and cheese clip. He has given it a few tries. Not a bad decision to continue on as it is a much safer and easier route to get through than the fireball stage. So Johnny Link now having problems with the hand stage the fourth time he's been grabbed and will have to decide whether or not he wants to keep playing or get burned out. So he is not going to take another intentional death. He is going to go ahead and play through the tanks and will be going through and taking on 6F1 here in just one moment. Either way, get your GGs in chat for a job well done on the side of Mitch Firepower. What an exceptional run, an exceptional race, just a very nice job and a very nicely done, well done job. I mean, exceptionally done. The first run was terrifying, and I'm sure we're gonna hear about that in a moment. Uh, Mitch Firepower has been invited to the invite or into the interview, so we'll look forward to seeing him in just one moment if possible. Um, but an exceptional run. First one was 38 minutes 55 seconds. Second was 33:58, a much faster time. And just absolutely exceptional on his side for sure. So very good job on the side of Mitch Flower Power and for Johnny Link as well. I mean, he's only a, well, he's actually got Bowser open, I believe, because uh, he should have played 6F1 right after, which would have been the one that opens up the, uh, the bridge. So anyway, the first race was, I believe we calculated it out to three minutes and 35 seconds difference. So uh, Mish Firepower just did a great job. Johnny Link just not quite able to keep up. He had a issue in the first level. A Bluebird was able to give him an early exit on a level 3-1 uh, actually and had to replay it. So that did kind of set the pace. And unfortunately, Mish Firepower just did not make any mistakes. So unfortunately for John Link, Johnny Link, uh, he did take an, uh, a loss there as well. But now just a few minutes again behind Mish Firepower is Johnny Lee. He's got his fire his fire flower suit. And he will be using uh, the any man's clip here in just one moment. Did Johnny get a cloud? I I should have thought you had one, Mitch. I I know I I'm guessing I saw one on Johnny Link's side, but I sure thought you had one in World Six Four or uh, World Six. I thought the bottom right hammer brother gave you one but okay yeah because atlantis was played on both sides and then immediately clouded over as soon as it was discovered so anyway 
A great race nonetheless, though, as Mitch or as Mitch Flower Power takes it 2-0. An extraordinary run on his side. Uh, and, of course, he will be looking forward to seeing who wins in the match between the Cobra 52 versus Glutamic Acid coming up here in just a couple of hours. I believe one hour and 36 minutes will be that race. And, of course, in 36 minutes, we also have another race coming up, which we are extremely excited about. Uh, just a lot of great races today. You really, truly don't want to miss it. But Paradox 64 is taking on the Haxer. Again, that's in 36 minutes at 4 p.m. Eastern. And that is going to be right here on Speed Gaming. Then in an hour and 36 minutes, that's 5 p.m. Eastern time. Macobra 52 taking on Glutamic Acid. And that is going to be over on Speed Gaming 2. So don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss any of those. They're going to be such incredible races, and it's going to be worth watching and tuning in for, for sure. So GG's on both sides to both of our runners. What an exceptional job, and what a great race. I loved seeing the competition. It was fierce. It was great. Mitch Flower Power had some incredible plays. Johnny Link had some outstanding maneuvers as well, and... Just as close as you could possibly get, I think. Just an extremely good job on both sides for both of our runners. So, GG's to both of them. We're checking to see if we can get the guys in for an interview real quick. We'd love to hear from them for sure. Alrighty, looks like we have Johnny Link in the setup room. He'll be joining us in just one moment. And just like that, we are greeted and uh, joined by one of my favorite runners. I got to be completely honest. Johnny Link, what an exceptional job, man. GG. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Wolf. Man, I love you, too. You're such a, one of my favorite commentators. I appreciate that. Well, I certainly appreciate the interview, or the interview with you as well as the race because all I can say, man, is wow. What an exceptional job. I mean, it was just, what a great race. I, that's all I can say about it. Thank you, thank you. I can't wait to watch it back. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't a total blowout, so it was way better than I expected. It was, a, it was a fun one. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I mean, you you made some outstanding plays. The decision in World 6 on the second seed was outstanding. I was watching from the commentator's perspective, and I'm like, oh wait, he missed the Navy. Oh, wait, he didn't need it. And I was trying to catch up with you with the things you were doing. And what an outstanding play. Yeah, I, I didn't even uh, think of using that pipe for a second. I kind of like went by it and then was like, wait a minute. I don't think I have to do these two ports. I might get lucky. And yeah, it was definitely lucky indeed. And, and absolutely extraordinary. Now, I have to jump forward to World 8, where you went after 6F1 initially. You had an issue with the hand stage. It was the tanks level. And then you kind of jumped back and rerouted and went elsewhere. Was there any thought process behind that? I I just feel like I have the worst hand luck ever. So I tried going that way and I kept getting grabbed. And I'm like, that might not even be a real fortress. And then maybe I'm going to keep getting grabbed on the way back. So I was like, eh, I'll scope it out. See if I can find the end first. So at least I know where I'm going. And then, yeah, of course, it was that one that I was trying to get to. But, yeah, I, even trying to go back there, it was like three or four times it pulled me in. So I was like, I'm just I'm just doing it, whatever, because it's just going to keep pulling me in. I'm just going to do the level. Makes sense. I know some runners will feel like if they're behind, especially, that they'll go ahead and play a level that may be a little bit out of the way. And I was wondering if maybe that was the same thing kind of going through your head. Yeah, I just... I feel like I would have just constantly kept getting grabbed and I, I was just sick of sitting there and getting pulled in, so I don't know. I mean, I kind of I kind of wish I just went for it at the beginning, but, you know, hindsight, oh well. Absolutely. That's one of those things you just kind of have to live and learn. And unfortunately, with the randomizer, there's no way you could have possibly known that. I mean, we were guessing at all the different fortresses like, wait, is this the right one? No, is this the right one? And I think both of you guys played all five of the sprites, uh, not just the forts, but also all the sprites. And, you know, it's the great equalizer and it, it stinks. But, you yeah, know, what a great performance, though. I mean, you did an exceptional job and I can't wait to see you next time. 
Yeah, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be playing with like such top level runners and just everyone and making it this far in the tournament. You know, I didn't expect to make it this far at all. So it's just such an honor. I really appreciate all the viewers, all the commentators, all the racers. Thank you so much. Well, I can honestly say the pleasure is all mine when I get to commentate on on extremely good races like this. And I would like to leave you with something that I hope helps and maybe makes you feel a little bit of a tinge of joy going away from here for now. And that is going into the bracket stage. I know you were a 5-1, Mitch was a 5 or a 6-0 and that set up the seating and everything, but he had a average time of 34-44 from his six races in the beginning with the round robin and you had a time of 34-26. So you did beat Mitch Flower Power in your averages uh, going from round robin to the bracket stages, but I, kudos on that. I mean, that is a oh, worthy I, endeavor for sure. I didn't, I didn't know that at all. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, you know, it could mean something, but you know, it could just be different seeds. You know, um, you get the thirty-minute seeds, you get the forty-minute seeds. There's nothing you can really do about it. But. Absolutely, and we actually saw that today. I mean, both runs taking over thirty-six minutes. The first one was won in 38.55 and that just shows how long it was yeah I was just excited when I actually made it to World 8 and I didn't see that he finished I was like oh I'm somewhat kind of keeping up so that was cool yeah I was I was definitely pulling for you in that regard it looked like you were trying so hard to come back that death at the very very beginning kind of set the pace for the the rest of the race I mean the 3-1 death just was so so there like that was the only problem you had and then other than that you were flawless but so was mitch i mean he was just like that one step ahead the yeah. entire time I... yeah honestly that first step uh like i i had you know i always have a lot of nerves going into any races but this one was like pretty big so i was even like more nervous so i think after i died there i was like all right shake it off i know that i'm i already know that i'm behind just play like it's just a normal seed and that no one's watching or anything so that kind of did help shake my nerves a little bit just knowing like all right i'm already at this like minute disadvantage just just play so i think that actually kind of helped there absolutely i mean if there was any nerves any confidence issues before that first one uh, there was nothing after that you really came alive and honestly i was enjoying it so much i don't know if you can hear it or not but my voice really is starting to get hoarse uh, just because of how exciting that was for me. Yeah, I really can't wait to watch this over. So I'm excited. Absolutely. And I, I hope you enjoy the commentary. I was probably just screaming at my mic the entire time. Uh, but <laughs> I was so excited about it. Uh, thank you for the, the absolutely astounding performance. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep playing. Can't wait for next year. Well, we will certainly look forward to that. And I think that's all that we have for now. SMB3 Rando is coming back in just a half hour. Like I said, we've got an extraordinary race for you coming up. Uh, meanwhile, on other channels, we have Speed Gaming 3. We just finished up a Star Wars Episode 1 racer that will be coming up in another hour and a half for another race over on Speed Gaming 4. Super Metroid Multi Category is currently on. And Speed Gaming 5 is currently in a MP2 Rando re Weekly. So definitely look forward to watching those. And then, of course, in 28 minutes right here, we're going to feature two more of our very distinguished runners where the hacks the Haxer is taking on Paradox 64. And, of course, we'll look forward to seeing that as well. On behalf of Speed Gaming, SMB3 Randomizer Community, Johnny Leak and Mish Flower Power, we want to say thank you so much to you, chat, for being here. You guys are awesome. If it wasn't for you all, we wouldn't be here. I really appreciate you all being so active in the chat today. I made my job a lot easier and a lot more fun. So thank you so much. There's a lot of places you could be today. You're not. You're here with us. And for that, we say thank you. On behalf of all of us, this is Growl Wolf signing off, saying keep racing, keep randomizing, take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.